Hi, I'm Sasha, and this is Queer Conversations, brought to you by Lesbians on the Loose. Over the last 50 years, the experience of coming out has changed dramatically. For some, coming out is no longer necessary, but for others, it can be a critical and cathartic moment in their personal history. Here are some members of our community sharing their stories. How I came out was is kind of an interesting story. I guess everybody's ears, but I, I had a friend, my best friend from school, and her mum, after being married to her my friend's dad for many, many years, came out one day, became a lesbian, well, was a lesbian, came out, and um, she then moved to uh, the Inner West, and I didn't hear from her for a while, and then my friend uh, contacted me and said, oh, mum's invited you around for dinner. I think you should come, and I'm like, okay. So I went around for, for dinner. Um, she was living with her partner at the time, and as I was leaving, um, she thrust a copy of Loddle at me and said, <laughs> I think you might find this interesting reading. I quickly looked at the title, saw Lesbians on the Loose and went, whoa, okay. Um, turned very red and then quickly left. I went home and kind of furiously read through it and um, thought, whoa, okay, um, that's like a whole new world. And then just hid it under my bed. And that's kind of how it started. I mean, you know, they could see what I couldn't see clearly and had seen it for like a long time. I'd never seen it and I never would have probably come across that magazine if it hadn't been for my friend's mum who, mm. uh, who gave it to me. And that was the only way that she could really say, communicate that to me um, in a way that I wasn't going to just run away and be completely embarrassed, I think. Um, it was a great source of embarrassment for me that I didn't understand really who I was for quite a long time. And then I, you know, did pull the magazine out from under my bed at some point and I, I actually went to um, a coming out group which was run by the um, Gay and Lesbian Counselling Service, which was a really fantastic um, community initiative that was running in Albion Street, Surrey Hills. Mm. Went up there one time and I started attending this, this group and that for me was my way of being able to express who I was to meet other people who I could identify with. Yeah, so growing up with um, a very, I have very mixed nostalgia and uh, fear from that time. So I grew up in a very conservative community in the Southern United States. Uh, my family is Southern Baptist. It was a very rigorous, disciplined um, household. And the community surrounding that was actually um, quite intense as well. So there were a lot of challenges in terms of expression growing up and identity and certainly around um, sexual orientation was a huge, huge issue. So I came out to my parents in an email in September 2013. I um, was way too scared to face them about it. I was living at university in the time and the university that I went to actually um, had a document that we had assigned called a covenant and there were all of these these rigorous kind of social upstandings we had to keep in order to be a part of the school. So I wasn't allowed to have any other types of expression in terms of my identity or orientation, um, or I would have gotten kicked out of school. Oh so gosh. it was a really, really stressful time. And I remember um, kind of secretly going to my parents and saying, hey, I've met someone, and I think that this is um, something that I want to pursue. And they were not at all receptive to that conversation. And it actually led me moving to Australia. Prior to that conversation, I'd met, I'd actually met an Australian. That's how I moved, ended up moving out okay. here. And we were deciding about where we wanted to live after I graduated from university at the end of 2013. And um, through the course of having those kind of coming out conversations to close family and a couple of close friends, I realized that I didn't really have a safe place there to express that, so I packed a suitcase and I came here. My family has been very supportive the whole way through. I think at the age of 13, I came out to my parents and said, I like people regardless of gender, even though I didn't really understand what the concept of gender truly was at the time. Um, and they just kind of, you know, give a little pat on the head and like, oh, that's nice, Kimberly. Um, and it wasn't until maybe my mid twenties that I actually started dating women and gender diverse people. 
Um, and I think I had sort of a second coming out with my parents because I brought a girl home for family night dinner um, and they kind of saw the spark between us and asked a few questions and said, oh, but you know, you've had so many boyfriends along the way. I'm like, well, yeah, but remember when I told you when I was 13 <laughs> that I was, you know, liked people regardless of their gender or sex or anything like that. Um, but they've been super supportive the whole way through. I identify as a lesbian and I didn't actually work that out till I was about 30. So I, my, my era of high school, it was very different to my children's experience through high school where exploring yourself and your identity is very normal and quite encouraged. Um, mine, my generation didn't really get that opportunity. So I didn't work it out for quite a long time. I was married, I had had the two children, they both have additional needs and I was doing, you know, what, what I was meant to do. And yeah. when I did work it out, I'd always had huge struggles with mental health and depression. Uh, when I did work it out, it's actually been really mind blowing to see the improvements um, in my mental health, just being able to live authentically. So uh -huh. I didn't have the younger experience so. it took a lot to get familiar with and comfortable just even terminology like what does it mean to be attracted to another woman um it was shortly after the aids crisis in the in america so there was a lot of gay panic and people would talk about homosexuals and gays in hushed tones like it wasn't really polite conversation <laughs> so it was probably university when i finally allowed myself to realize that there was this other life or this other um, being that I could identify with. And of course, LGBT groups on campus and stuff was a big help for that because I found like-minded people. And um, So I was later in life coming out more about 25. Um, but when I did, I finally got what all the fuss was about with my girlfriend saying, oh, I kissed this boy. It was great. I was like, wait, I kissed a girl and it was fantastic. So <laughs> finally understood all the fuss, but um, yeah. So I was working at a women's health center a social worker uh, yeah across the room in one of those meetings there was a uh, you know a woman and I was just so besotted that I could hardly speak uh, it was one of those things where I was just like you know awkward around her and it was fortunate I was working at a women's health center because of course there were women who identified as a lesbian I didn't identify as a lesbian at the time um, so I could understand and put words to what was happening and it was pretty instant. I felt madly in love with her and I'm very close to my family so it's not like I could keep it a secret although I knew it might be a surprise. Um, so I rang and told my dad actually, that's who answered the phone and he said, I think we should tell your mum and uh, we'll, you know, we'll have a chat about that and I said come for dinner I was in a shared house I said come for dinner I'm thinking they're going to come and congratulate me that I'm so you know that I finally worked it out um, and I opened the door and there was my dad and my mum had these large red eyes and it looked like she'd been crying for the last four nights since she'd found out that I was a lesbian um, and said is it true is it true Vanessa what your father said so I realized um she was in mourning and I was in celebration. I think one of the things is with migrants is they're stuck a little bit in the time that they came. So my parents had a, a view of their native country from when they came and that was very hard and harsh, a very Catholic country. It was things they didn't talk about. And for my mum, she actually hadn't met any lesbians. So she had a bunch of preconceptions around like, you can't be, you look, you look really you look like a woman you look like a woman <laughs> like, yes um so she had a lot of a lot of ideas and she had a lot she had never met other you know other lesbians so she didn't know it wasn't until many years later when mum and i went back to argentina as a young um l lesbian with my mum and it was kind of interesting that actually there were more out and proud and there was a community of uh, queer people in Argentina. She had just missed out from 1979 to when we went in the 90s, you know, that kind of piece of history that 
everywhere had evolved, including her native country. So sometimes it's just uh, around that transition or that migrant experience. Look, the great thing about my parents is they wanted me to get an education. They were very committed about that. Uh, they're both quite progressive. So I was quite shocked, you know, <laughs> when they didn't celebrate me initially. They do now. And I have to say, I, you know, she cried for two years and that is not an exaggeration. She cried for two years. But mum joined P flag and she marched for 10 years or more in the Mardi Gras. And my parents had more of a gay life than I did for a very long time. So they got there in the end, but it was a, a, a harder journey. I think for me, um, I, in terms of the cultural stuff, because they wanted me to have an education, to be, you know, to be an independent woman, it didn't feel hard for me to follow my heart and do what I felt or what I wanted to do in the world. I, that's kind of what they asked of me. They said, you know, we we came, we gave up family for you to have this opportunity. We want you to have it all. We want you to study and be independent. And and my father has always said women should have equal rights to men and um, so it, it didn't feel like a barrier to me. In fact, I was probably quite naive <laughs> thinking that it would be an issue. So I, I grew up in Lake Macquarie Way and uh, it was a very religious town that I grew up with, went to a religious school, quite, you know, and everything was, was everything in the family and life uh, being brought up was focused around religion. From about the age of 14 or 15, I knew that there was something different with me. I, um, I tried, you know, having a boyfriend thing in high school, didn't feel right, you know, there was nothing there. And uh, yeah, I suddenly, <laughs> I kissed a girl one day, actually she kissed me. Completely <laughs> unexpected and I was still had no idea what it could have been and then the fireworks suddenly went off and then suddenly it was like, oh, hang on, maybe I'm gay. Because in the religious world, there were used to be zero conversations about it, it just, you don't talk about it, something that doesn't exist basically. Um, was what it was like growing up. And so coming out was pretty rough um, for everyone involved and it's something that I will quite happily never do again, to be honest. Yeah. And um, But yeah, compared to now living, like I, I moved away once, once I finished my high school certificate, uh, or HSC, that's what I'm looking for, and tried to figure out who I was and how I fitted in, in the world, basically. Um, I ended up moving back in that area um, a few years later and uh, yeah it's amazing just in those few years how much the society had changed and mm. how much my perception of them and by me being okay with myself didn't really care what they thought it was their problem not mine and then yeah so I, I've lived there now for another 10 years and uh, yeah just really enjoyed watching people's mind shifts change like I said society in general has shifted its views which is fantastic but going to the small town syndrome I walked down the main street of there when I'd come out fairly new and someone who I'd known beforehand quite well and I had classed as a mate spat at me as I was walking down the street and so I crossed to the other side of the road and went what the hell is going on here like is being gay really that bad like I get why people commit suicide when they will come when they come out because of the, the response that a lot of people get that you just go from being a normal person in, you know, growing up to suddenly there's this thing that's slightly different from everyone else and then you're treated like a leper. You know, you feel like a leper, you feel like you're not good enough. Um, and I think that the younger generation these days are really lucky that they don't have that stigmatism anywhere near as what the, the generations before me had. And hey, my generation was easier than the previous generations as well. So look, I've got some some friends that I had from when I was younger who were older than me and they were fantastic. You know, it would be, oh, I was young, searching, trying to work out who I was. I did some stupid shit as most people did, <laughs> you know, around that age group. And uh, they helped really throw me on the straight and narrow but, and, and direct me into being a decent person. And uh, I really appreciate that. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you like our content, follow us and check out our website lotl.com to learn more.